Well, hi, everybody. It's me, Greg Anderson, host of the Atomic Timekeeping podcast. Normally, that's an audio-only podcast, but I had a little something in mind here that I thought doing this on video would be lots of fun. By the way, if you're looking for the Atomic Timekeeping podcast, you can find it from the uh, official blog of the Atomic Timekeeping podcast. And it's right here. That's where you'll find the official blog of the Atomic Timekeeping podcast. So I hope you'll uh, download that. It's free subscription in iTunes, so you know, try that out. I have here with me a bunch of radio-controlled clocks. These are clocks that will set themselves using a reference from radio station WWVB. It's a long-wave radio station out of Colorado. It's about 350 miles from here in that direction. And they pick up the time data from WWVB, and then they set themselves to the right time. I thought this might be fun to do kind of as a competition between these clocks and sort of a race and see which one could interpret the data and set itself the quickest. But I just don't have enough assistance here to make sure I start them all at the same time. So I'm just going to sort of do this all at once here. I have, uh, why don't I start this one first? This is a clock that I bought and then I modified it and put a radio controlled movement in it, which I got from uh, Clockit a few years ago. Uh, this is an older model that they don't carry anymore. It's uh, what I call the Hetchinger movement. And uh, if I put a battery in here, I'll uh, get that one going. It'll start to search for the time signal and then it'll start to slowly tick as it starts to, uh, to receive that. So I'll let that go. That one takes a little bit longer to set itself than the others. Now here's one from Lacrosse Technologies. And I really like this one. It's a simple push button uh, design there so you can choose your time zone. So I'm going to put a battery in here and press mountain time right now. And it will start to uh, swing around and start to set itself. OK, there's one here from um, this is uh, called Atomics. Uh, Cheney Instruments is the manufacturer. And uh, you can get this movement now from Clockit. I'll stick a battery in here, and there's a special way. I've already preset it to close to the right time. Now, when it gets to the zero mark, I click once, and then again. And it's beeping to indicate to me that if, if I've got a good, steady rhythm of a beeping, that means I got a pretty good uh, signal, so it's probably going to set itself pretty well. Uh, maybe, maybe not there. I'll have to put it over here. Okay, that's better. I guess it didn't like being next to the metal table uh, in order to set itself. So I'll let that one go for a while. Uh, I love this one. This is my very first radio controlled clock, the Junghans Mega Clock. And if I stick a battery in here, the first thing it's going to do is these, uh, these hands are going to race around to the 12 o'clock position. And uh, then it'll start receiving the radio signal and set itself pretty soon from there. I also have the wall version of that same Yunkan's mega clock. So why don't I stick a battery in here, see how this goes. And uh, OK, so I've got these rolling here. Now here's one from Oregon Scientific. And I'll just, uh, where's my battery? I'll use this battery. Stick this battery in here and get this one rolling. And then, OK, here's one from a company called Skyscan. And uh, get that one rolling here. Now, like I said, I, I wanted to do this kind of as a competition, but it really wouldn't be a fair fight, partly because, oh, look at this. Uh, OK, the lacrosse uh, clock has gone through a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a technique that it uses. It aligns the, uh, the second hand to the 12 o'clock position. And then here, in, as, as soon as the uh, hour hand and the minute hand, which are independent of the second hand, as soon as they get around to the 8 o'clock position, it's going to stop for a few seconds. And then it's going to start thinking about you know, what, uh, what the radio station is sending it so that it can uh, correct itself from there. So OK, it looks like it's already found. The proper, uh, the proper time. And so the second hand is already 
ticking away at the correct time. Uh, and this is going to take a little bit for the uh, hour and minute hand to, to reach around to the right time, which right now is uh, 6 16 p.m. So that'll take a little, uh, little bit, and then that'll be all right. Uh, this one here has already started to seek. Uh, actually, when it's spinning at this rate, it means it's already received and processed the data. And now it's just going to take a while for this one to spin around because the hands are not independent of each other. Uh, it's limited by the speed at which the second hand can spin around before it reaches the correct time. And then it'll run normally after that. So I'm going to put that one aside here for just a second. Uh, let's see. Here's one that... I love this one as well. This is from uh, Oregon Scientific, a very large display on that, so uh, I, I do enjoy this one. Looks like my dogs have decided to join me here. <laughs> okay, so I'll let this one go, and it's going to just start off at uh, 12 o'clock, except, well, let me change my time zone because I'm in the mountain time zone. So now it's showing 1 o'clock, and it's going to tick away for a little while until it reaches, uh, until it's able to... Uh, receive the correct time from uh, the atomic clock and get itself going just right. Let me make sure I've got this one activated. Okay, there goes the receiver now. Uh, I like this one from Seiko, the Seiko R-Wave. It's a very elegant kind of a clock here. And uh, it's got a switch on the back, so it's already set to the uh, mountain time zone. I'll let that go for a little while. Here's another uh, Oregon Scientific clock. Oh, did I say this one was Oregon Scientific? It's actually, uh, for a while there, some of the Oregon Scientific models were released with the Radio Shack brand name on them. So I get confused a little bit. There is a Radio Shack version and an Oregon Scientific version of this clock. Um, and then, so here's a little... This was my first Oregon Scientific clock that I bought. And uh, I'll just get this one going. Put the battery cover on here. <laughs> okay, I only have three more here to activate. This is another Oregon Scientific clock. This one's kind of fun because it projects the time on the ceiling. And at night, you can see what time it is uh, without even having to roll over. Just look up and it's projected on the ceiling. And this one's clear, so you can sort of see how it lights up at night. So I'll get this one going on the mountain time zone. This one, uh, the brand name on this one was Skyscan, and um, I, I replaced the, uh, well, I, I modified it. I took, I took a piece off of it and painted it, uh, but it's a Skyscan clock. Oh, look at this. The Junghans Mega Clocks have already set themselves to the right time.